Well, first, to thank John. Uh, Governor Kasich and I have known each other a while because we worked together in Washington, D.C., and I saw how he reached across the aisle to get things done. He's a conservative who focuses on solutions. That's what we need right now, don't we, in this country? Uh, by the way, uh, he's also a guy who um, is very popular in the state of Ohio because he's done the right things. So he's a great example of someone who did the hard things, the right things when he got elected. And now he's getting, you know, a positive response because people appreciate that. That's what they expect our public officials to do. Uh, in his case, he inherited a state that was really in trouble. And Ohio was at the bottom of the heap, 48th in the country in job creation when John Kasich took over. Double-digit unemployment. A deficit of $8 billion, unprecedented in the history of our state. I remember at the time people saying, well, that's great. John Kasich's going to take the, you know, the reins as governor now, and he's going to raise taxes because he has to to close that budget gap, right? He said, no, I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to do it the right way and the hard way. Uh, we're going to make government work smarter, faster, more efficiently. Uh, we're going to actually reform this broken tax code, make it work better, and cut some taxes, not raise taxes to create more economic activity and therefore more revenue through growth. We're going to reform our regulatory system in this state. We're going to deal with the debt and deficit in a responsible way. And guess what? Today, the 89 cents that Ted Strickland left in the rainy day fund is now $2 billion. Now Ohio is not 48th in the country in job creation. We don't have double-digit unemployment. We're top 10 in the country in job creation. And on the way up, Republican policies and leadership works, doesn't it? Washington, I've seen him do it here. That's why I supported him for president. I think he would have been a great president. Mike DeWine, I think, said it well that we were proud of the campaign that he ran. Um, and, and look, we've now got a real contrast between Ted Strickland and me. This is a race for the United States Senate. It's a race that has a real choice for people. Uh, Ted Strickland's record, as I said, as governor, he is one of failure for Ohio working families. John Kasich picked up the pieces, and we're grateful to him for that. Uh, but also going back to his days in Congress, Ted Strickland was in Congress for 12 years. In those 12 years, as you look at his record, you won't be able to find a single bill that he authored or co-authored that became law. Not one. That's hard to do. Um, if you look at our record, it's one of accomplishment, getting stuff done. And that was true in the House, it's been true in the Senate. We can name over 40 bills that President Obama signed into law. The most recent one, is both Mike DeWine and John Kasich mentioned, is his Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act. We have an epidemic right now in our state. People are dying in higher numbers than because of any other cause of accidental death, more than car accidents of overdoses. But that's not the whole story. Many people beyond the tragic overdose deaths are casualties of this. And Governor Kasich said it well. Uh, stay away from this stuff. It is dangerous. It will ruin your life and your ability to be able to achieve your God-given purpose in life. And that's what this is all about, getting people into treatment, getting people into recovery, allowing them to get back on track. And our legislation will help. It will help because it will make the federal government a better partner with state and local government and the great nonprofits out there every day in Columbus and all around our state who are doing the good work. And I, I really appreciate the work Mike DeWine has done on this as Attorney General. John Kasich has done as governor. Uh, John has started a campaign, by the way, all across the state, of getting people talking about it again. Remember back in the 90s, uh, we had sort of an effort for prevention and education that was more aggressive. Unfortunately, it took our eye off the ball. And that's part of the reason we now have this prescription drug and heroin epidemic. And I thank him for that. And I thank Karen Casey for that, the First Lady who's been very involved in that. And look, I, I am sure that we're going to win this thing for one reason, one reason alone. You know what that is? It's all these volunteers here. This office alone has made almost 700,000 voter contacts. <laughs> Fifty thousand doors. Uh, that's a lot of doors in Columbus, uh, and they have made uh, over four hundred thousand phone calls. I mean, it's unbelievable. And yeah, it's been done by some of these college students and high school students. It's also been done by some more traditional volunteers who've always helped out in our, in our campaigns. And uh, we had fifteen hundred volunteers helping us last weekend. There's no campaign in the country doing that. Uh, frankly, there's not a presidential campaign doing that. And we've now contacted over three point three million Ohioans. And we aren't just saying, hey, this is what Rob's about. Please support him. We're saying, what are you about? What do you care about? What are your top issues? And now we're in touch with those folks, telling them why we've got the solutions they're looking for and what I've done, not just what I will do, but what I've done. And 
and I think that's really important for Ohio. People want to know that you are getting stuff done. They hired me to do a job five and a half years ago. We can talk about how we accomplished that and what our plans are for the future to be able to make life better for all families in Ohio. And you get back to a time when we can actually see some economic growth and opportunity nationally so Ohio's not facing those headwinds so that we can indeed be able to look at our kids and grandkids and say, hey, your life's going to be better off than mine. We don't feel that today. There's a lot of reasons that they don't. Wages are flat, expenses are up, and middle class squeeze is very real. We've got solutions for that. And as we get out and talk to people about it, we're getting a great response. So everybody here today, thank you for what you've already done, what you will do. Uh, Matt Borges is doing a terrific job as our state chair. Uh, he told me earlier we have about, what, 80 days left of the election? And um, those 80 days, we're going to continue this effort, aren't we? We're going to not let our momentum end. We're going to push hard. We're going to be sure that that finish line we see up ahead, we sprint through. Um, and if we do that, I do believe we'll be able to not be reelected, but also keep the Senate majority, and most importantly, be able to provide more hope and opportunity for families all across Ohio. Thank you guys for being here.